We're being told tonight that more victims have come forward in the Penn State child sex abuse investigation. Our chief investigative correspondent, Armin Katayan, has learned that the state police are vetting the claims of others who say they too were sexually assaulted by former assistant football coach Jerry Sandusky. Sandusky has already been charged with assaulting eight boys, at least one of them, in a university locker room. The scandal has cost Coach Joe Paterno and the Penn State president their jobs. Armin Katayan is in State College, Pennsylvania tonight with another development in the case. Armin? Good evening, Scott. On a day those victims came forward, we got a glimpse in a brief interview into the emotions of a man at the center of the scandal, Mike McQuarrie. From the moment the sex abuse controversy erupted, assistant coach Mike McQuarrie has been out of sight and hasn't spoken. He's a key witness because it was McQuarrie who had told the grand jury that in 2002, he had seen former defensive coach Jerry Sandusky rape a boy as young as 10 years old in a locker room shower. An act according to court papers, McQuarrie reported to then head coach Joe Paterno. Today, he spoke for the first time since the scandal broke. Do you have any idea when you think you might be ready to to talk. This process has to play out. I just don't have anything else to say at yeah. all. Okay. And then just one last thing. Just describe your emotions right now. Uh, all over the place. Just kind of uh, shaking. Crazy? Crazy. <laughs> and you said what? Like a snow globe. Like a snow globe. Yes, sir. Right. Last Friday, McQuarrie was placed on indefinite administrative leave by Penn State, keeping him away from Saturday's game in part over concerns about his safety. Last night in a phone interview with Bob Costas, Sandusky said this. I say that I am innocent of those charges. Well, I could say that, you know, I have done some of those things. I have horsed around with kids. I, I have showered after workouts. I, I have hugged them and I've, I have touched their leg without intent of sexual contact. Today, Pennsylvania attorney Ben Andriazzi, who represents one of the alleged victims, said his client was extremely disappointed by the interview, and it was 100 percent false. In an interview yesterday, Andriazzi described the claims of his client. Can you characterize the kind of abuse your client allegedly sustained? Severe. Over a period of time, he suffered severe sexual abuse. Mr. Sandusky built a relationship with my client, and I believe that he used that relationship with the Second Mile program and with the university uh, to his advantage so he could essentially stalk and prey on, on these victims, including my client. According to court records, McQuarrie was never questioned by the police after reporting the assault. But according to an email obtained by the Associated Press today, McQuarrie says he stopped the assault and then discussed it with the police. Scott. Armin, in that brief conversation you had with McQuarrie on his porch, uh, part of that was off camera. I wonder what he told you. Well, Scott, he's very rattled by this whole experience. Off camera, he was telling me how concerned he was about his personal life, his personal safety and the future in coaching, because obviously he's caught in a very difficult situation here. I think the word shattered and or shaken really operates here because Mike is just in a, in a state where he really doesn't know, it appears, which way to turn. Armin, thank you very much.